Welcome to the Hot Slice Podcast with Pete's Today. I am Creative Director Josh Cowan. Along with me, the Executive Editor of Pete's Today, Denise Greer. Hello, Josh. How are you this lovely, lovely day? You're sporting a a, a wonderful shirt today. It's my new favorite t-shirt, I gotta say. I hope these hurry up and become available online. Like, oh, we were wanting. I'm hoping they come online. We we didn't plan to wear merch yeah today. we did but we both have pizza expo shirts on so it was the first year we did merch and it was a huge success hoping it comes back people loved it yeah um speaking of shows uh we got one coming up in october october yes. 1st, 2nd 2023 in atlantic city pizza and pasta northeast absolutely so you're gonna have show floor competitions education all of that uh, you know, and the great thing about Atlantic City, because it is a regional show, it's a little smaller, a little more digestible maybe than than our big show. Uh, so it's always a fun one to get to because uh, I just I just love being able to walk around the show and talk to people and just the the energy and it's just it's just a fun show. Pizza and Pasta Northeast is a fun show. Get more in depth conversations. You know, yeah. if, if you're wanting to ask questions, you're attending seminars. Uh, you know, there's a lot, you know, there's less people to, to, to contend with. So yeah, you can get into some really good, great conversations with, uh, pizza makers, pizza owners, mm-hmm. operators, and, uh, it's a really great place to network, great place yeah. to network. And we're not going to, we're not giving away anything, but I, I have heard to the grapevine talking to our marketing folks that registration is opening very, very, very soon. So okay. keep an eye out on pizza today's social pizza expo social, uh, and we'll be announcing that registration open because as soon as registration opens, those competition slots open. So if you yeah. want to compete, you've got to get in there early because if you miss that first day that it opens, you may miss your category. Yeah, it's uh, it's 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 funny. Like you know, people message me a couple of days before the show when they in a competition. And I'm like, yeah, you're like this has been sold out. Right. Since- it's been sold out for months now at this point. So we'll get yeah. you on this kind of thing. But yeah, yeah. so yeah, uh, just be on the lookout on our, our socials and uh, we'll let you know when it opens up. Um, but today um, our, we're, we're speaking to our keynote from last year's Pizza and Pasta Expo, yeah. Mr. John Gudekanst. So I love John Gudekanst. If you have never heard him speak about dough, like... <laughs> He geeks out in a way like no other person in the industry does about pizza dough and pizza making. And I love to tap him for things like our need to know column in uh, in Pizza Today. And so this month released today is a need to know on uh, that crumb structure. So we're talking all about what he calls the guts of, of pizza. And it's also what I love is you know, it is so trendy right now to do a profile photo mm-hmm. of that crumb structure, you know, do a nice close up on Instagram, yeah. like people like salivate and geek out on like what that crumb structure works, uh, looks like. And so he really gets into some of the technical sciencey stuff about uh, getting getting that crumb structure right. Yeah, we, we dive a little deep with John and uh, uh, and it's always fun to talk to him and, and he is the best headline writer maybe he he's an amazing headliner as well so uh yeah enjoy our conversation with john gudekamp looking to grow your pizzeria or restaurant then you'll want to try the power of a cloud-based pos system with hunger rush you'll get everything you need this fully integrated restaurant management system allows you to easily streamline operations accelerate the delivery process and grow your business through hunger rush 360 marketing and it's so easy to use Want AI-powered text ordering? It's built in. Need to track orders? No problem. Schedule a personalized demo at HungerRush.com today. Performance Food Service is proud to deliver high-quality products, innovative technology, and custom operational solutions to restaurants of all sizes across the country. The flagship division of Performance Food Group, with deep roots in the restaurant industry, Performance Food Service has been the exclusive distributor of the Roma family of brands for more than 65 years. This signature relationship has allowed Performance Food Service to become a leader in the pizza and Italian segment of food service nationwide. With extraordinary pizza cheese comes extraordinary rewards. Only Baccio Exceptional Italian Pizza Cheese offers the Gold Club Rewards Program with monthly cash back on every cheese purchase. Members also receive funds twice a year to use in their exclusive marketing store. 
It's their way of saying grazie to customers. Schedule a demonstration at bacciocheese.com slash hot slice and discover how rewarding Baccio exceptional Italian pizza cheese can be. Pizza is your legacy. Build it with Baccio. All right. All right. Here we go. John Goodcants. John, hey. we love seeing you, man. Thanks for coming yeah. back on the show. Well, thanks for having me. Thanks for having Absolutely. me. Absolutely. So we had to bring you on because we have to talk about the article you just wrote and pizza today that actually went live today's thursday as you're seeing this or hearing this um so today is when the june issue launches and the need to know is all about the guts of the pizza and what Uh, i love is you truly truly do geek out on this like i'll see your instagram and you're looking at the uh webbing and making sure the webbing is beautiful uh before your pizza even goes in the oven uh so what what was the you know as you were writing this article what were like some of the things you're like i gotta make sure i talk about this so everyone knows that <laughs> this is how you get a beautiful crumb structure yeah well actually it was a uh, uh, peter reinhardt when when i was at atlantic city last year um speaking with him i realized how li- little like pizza guys uh n- n- some some of them don't know about you know manipulating their dough the questions just kept coming at us you know how do you do this Te- temperature and so i really got interested in the time and temperature and what uh these these guys all different uh from the vpn guys to you know mm-hmm. using three percent salt when you're only supposed to use two percent everyone's bending the rules now yeah. you know and and the there roman are no guys, rules that's the rule yeah right? <laughs> yeah it's crazy the <laughs> roman guys just doing a direct pizza method but using higher temperature and longer holding to create uh, the same type of beautiful um spongy guts <laughs> well uh, <laughs> a, a, as a, a sourdough bread maker would you know yeah so it's it's fun to to do all these different things and luckily i have a, a venue on the weekends where i can i can manipulate this from wednesday until saturday where, where i sell all the, the stuff and uh-huh. to do it oh, um, awesome. and at, for a long time we didn't change our uh, our dough in my store for a long time I didn't even really think about it uh-huh. and I, I know there's a lot of pizza makers out there maybe just don't it, you know let's just keep doing the same thing i got the same yeah. recipe back there mm-hmm. um yeah. but uh, there are certain ways that you can get uh different doughs it, it's it's amazing just everything from you know, the grind, the protein, the gluten, the hydration time, temperature, salt, mixing, holding, the proofing, and even the baking, you know, uh, as coordinated on each one of those things. It's all a part of evolving as a pizza maker. You know, that's, that's what's going to push the pizza industry forward, stuff like this. Yeah, it truly absolutely. Is. Playing. Now, um, you know, one of the questions we kind of get, and so I'm going to throw it to you, is, you know, if you've if say I have a pizzeria and I have, you know, I made my, I made my dough formula from the beginning and I haven't really manipulated, I haven't adjusted it. I haven't really changed it, you know, for, for those folks uh, or for people just starting out, you know, where do you start with dough manipulation? Where do you, what do you play with first? Yeah. Well, we, I, I kind of forced uh, us to, to do stuff. So we came out with a line of, uh, uh, Detroit red top pizzas, which are yeah, the oh, those look good too. <laughs> and then we went into Sicilian pizzas, and uh, we will go back through those to and literally force ourselves to start thinking about those things. Mm-hmm. Uh, for example, Detroit, uh, you uh, there is so much attention paid to the toppings and the side of it that mm-hmm. not many people talk about the middle and how 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 do you do that? But then I met some guys who are doing sourdough like. <laughs> The, yeah. the inside of their dough is sourdough. Like yeah, that's amazing to me. Yeah. Um, so anyway, to, to start out, it, it's it's um uh, really just thinking about what kind of flours you're using. And mm-hmm. right now, the relationship, and I'm I'm really all about nature. Uh, yeah. The relationship between uh, uh, people, humans on this planet, and and what we're doing to the planet is really important to me. And I, I really like these these semolinas that are coming out of Sicily. Uh, there's yeah. a guy named Filippo Drago. Sounds like a, a freaking <laughs> vampire or something. Like, <laughs> <Davis> <laughs> Drago. <laughs> but, uh, I love it. 
or a Rocky opponent. Yes. <laughs> yeah. So, oh, absolutely. Absolutely. <laughs> Rocky Four. <laughs> yeah. He's got a mill in Sicily and he's doing these ancient grains that have been forgotten for so long. Even over there, they're forgotten. Mm -hmm. And these these semolinas, so they're growing in these hot temperatures, which is what we're getting to right now in the world. And I'm, I'm surprised to not see more um, pizza if, if people in the industry embrace mm -hmm. the these semolinas. They have a different texture because their their protein is their gluten content's a little different, so it's more like a a cake like uh, texture, which mm -hmm. I love. Yeah. And uh, but that's really really cool. And then the kerns that we're working with too, which is the, a perennial wheat that comes mm -hmm. up for about seven years. Its roots go really deep, so they don't have to keep uh, manipulating the soil and fertilizing it and stuff like that. So, but um. I forgot your, what was the question? <laughs> <laughs> um, you know, where should they start first with manipulation? Like if they wanted to take their standard, say they have a hand tossed standard American dough, uh, yeah. you know, what, the where best... would they start manipulating their dough to get maybe an increased uh, crumb structure uh, or, you know, just that uh, on the side? Yes. <laughs> I think the, the first thing to do is like go to the pizza expo or, or coming up now at Atl Atlantic city and yeah. just sit in on these things. You know, you, you go in there and you think, yeah, you know, I've been in business 18 years. I'm cool. I don't, I don't need to listen to someone, but you sit down and listen to some of these guys uh -huh. like Michael Bausch and, and those guys, uh, it, it's, it's really amazing. And you're like, Oh, wow. I didn't, didn't think about doing that. And so it's the first, the, the thought that you have, but also uh, I, I tell people just do, do your same mix, do the uh -huh. same thing you do, maybe add a little more water to it. Okay. Yeah. Add a higher hydration, hold it for one or two more days yeah. and see what happens. I mean, there's dudes in Chicago now that they're curing their, <laughs> this is really amazing to me. They're mm -hmm. curing their thin crusts. What do you There's mean by curing? curing. What yeah, do you what do you mean, mean by, by curing? Five freaking weeks, okay? Curing, they're basically sheeting them out, putting them, making rounds, putting them on baker's paper so that it absorbs the moisture because they're stacked one on top of the other. Okay. And they're popping them in there to create this, this amazing- Popping them in where? In, where are they putting them? In a Just curing? right in the walk-in, not oh, even in the walk-in. Walk they're just like sitting one on top of the other for weeks huh. at a time. And uh, it, it, it creates this crazy thin cracker-like uh, crust. And so I didn't believe it at first. And we, we tried it. And mm -hmm. I'm like, my guys were just like, something is different about that. I'm like, I don't know. Is it the mold? <laughs> <laughs> but it, mold. <laughs> it wasn't moldy at all. It just had a, a character to it. It was like, hey, I'm a thin, thin crust. Yeah. Um, it's but, that, huh? <laughs> Yeah. Did it have some tang to it? That's it what had. It had a little tang to it. So we don't use any. Uh, we started like I changed our thin crust because it's holding a thin crust in a box is the worst mm. thing you could ever. It's like putting a margarita in a box from uh, yeah. you know, Naples. For sure, it's the worst thing you could do. So you you have to try to manipulate something going on by hi uh, manipulating hydration. We went mm. to using baking soda, baking powder. Yeah. And then we just stopped everything, all leavening at all yeah. to create a, just a, a crisp crust. That's how we do taverns here. That's like, yes. taverns are big here in Indiana and that's how There's we do it. There, there is no yeast in, yep. in, a, in, mm -hmm. in our tavern styles. It's all, it's all like you said. So yeah. Kind of fun. there's there's some uh, it's it's amazing to see those old school guys you know they're using lard or crisco mm -hmm. in their dough too so basically that uh the oils and using extra virgin olive oil too uh is you coat the gluten strands so that they can't absorb any mm -hmm. water or moisture yeah so basically they're they're stuck they're straight jacketed so they're going to be crisp uh -huh. and uh, it's pretty cool now in your so, in in your so standard pizza uh that you guys serve you know, when you, when you get done mixing and you're about to ball and you're examining it, what are you, what are you looking for as far as the gluten or the structure? Like, I know a lot of people use the, the window pane method to make sure that it, that it's gonna, you know, have, you know, you could kind of see through it. What, what else are you looking for in that, that actual dough after it's mixed? 
Well, uh, I look for a, a bounce back too. So if we take it out and we'll put it in a bulk ferment, like on a table, maybe 15 minutes, 12 mm -hmm. minutes, whatever time we have. And, you know, to press, press your finger in it bounces, get a good bounce back on it uh, through, through that fingerprint is, is also really good. But the window pane test is a really good judge of, of, of your mix. Um, any separation you have uh, mm -hmm. where the, it just falls apart is, uh -huh. is really not good. And even just an extra uh, bench fold, uh, it, it helps your forearms. But let Josh <laughs> see your forearms. Come on, man. Show me. There we go. Oh, yeah. There you go. Uh, so even, even that is, is doing something. Yeah. Now, on that note, I've found where, and this is, we started doing this with breads, that you can do amazing stuff. If you've got your dough in the refrigerator, you bring it out, let it get room temperature just a little bit. And I call it re-kneading. It's the re-kneading process. You re-knead that and mm -hmm. pop it back in there to let it relax again, you're going to get twice the strength out of your dough. I, and oh, wow. I'll tell you what, it's, it, it'll blow like crazy. It'll, uh, <laughs> it, it's amazing. So those little tricks, any pizza person can go in to their walk-in and look at their dough and say, what if we did this? What if we did mm -hmm. this? Um, yeah. And it's also about the inverse relationship between uh, uh, mm -hmm. moisture when, when you're baking. So if you're baking mm -hmm. at a, you have a say like 55 to 58 percent hydration like the vpn the, the pure naples pizza yeah and you're bake you bake that at 550 say yeah uh you you have to bake it for a longer time so you're going to lose mm -hmm. so much more moisture out of it and it's mm -hmm. going to have a crisper crust and it won't look like something baked at 900 degrees mm -hmm. so um uh it's it's you you have to decide what you're going to do with your ovens too so a lot of guys pizza people um like i went out and bought a beautiful bread oven german bread oven where we do our new york style pizzas and our our new york style pizzas is the same dough that we use for our regular pizzas it's a direct oh, method wow. dough, and okay. uh, it's a little higher hydration but we get a beautiful we do 20 out 20 inch huge new york style pizzas oh wow that is cool. Yeah, so, and they sell really well. So, what are you tinkering with now? What what what's what's kind of got yes. your, your passion going right now, or what's what what kind of trend do you see? Uh, <laughs> you know, I the trend I I really see still continuing is this uh the Roman style pizzas. Okay, mm -hmm. concentration on getting this beautiful crust. Okay, bringing mm -hmm. it out of the oven, topping it with all sorts of toppings. And it's, it's hard for some America, even me, I couldn't get it through my head for a long time that a, a pizza doesn't have to just be topped before the oven. It can be totally topped after the oven. I, most of my pizzas, now my artisan ones on the weekend, I don't even put sauce on them. Uh, I'll put finishing sauce on them after the oven, uh, like roasted zucchini and then prosciutto mm -hmm. di parma and some, some beautiful finishers. And it is gorgeous. And you've already got the slices already cut then too. Yeah. So, We've seen I, that here with uh, like people doing that with focaccia, like yeah. um, doing that for events and things. Like I, I'll see that. It's uh, perfect for that. And yeah. you know, the whole thing is, uh, I think the health departments now are, are kind of chilling on that stuff. It used to be, you couldn't, no, you can't let anything sit out like that. No way. You, you've got a, you've got a window of time where you, only have uh, you know 30 minutes that that piece can be out there and mm -hmm. but it's had numerous times like hey you want to come to walmart now they have pepperoni rolls just sitting out in the you know on a tray <laughs> so uh that that i think is the 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 trending now and these these piece uh people like uh massimiliano saivo uh saiva who's going around the world, just training people to do this. Mm -hmm. And so people have these kiosks now in their pizzerias um, that uh, have all this gorgeous stuff on them. And uh, it, it creates uh, just this wow factor. Uh, yeah. When we went to the Pizarium, and I love that name, in yeah. Rome, where Gabriel Banchi, we did a, a stop, like a stodge there for a day. And it was a really tiny place. And they did everything after the fact. I mean, mm -hmm. they had marinated herring, uh, just anything, just, just tons of stuff. But and it was gorgeous, just laid out there. And people will line the block for it. 
Yeah. So back oh, cool. slices. Slices are big. I see some pizza places and I'm like, wow, you're not doing slices. And yeah. in, in the mindset of your business mindset, you're like, you know what? That's going to be a waste of, we're going to be throwing pizzas away like crazy. And I did it for six months. It drove me crazy. I'm like, damn. Yeah. But you know what? It's like being a drug dealer when you have sliced people. Yeah. Sliced people, you give them that taste. Yeah. <laughs> and they'll be back. They'll be yeah. back, man. And we well, actually, and you're in a college town. Slices oh, yeah. Yeah. are right. huge. But, you know, it's it's the the guys like me, the workers. It's yeah. the guys working on the cars and stuff. Yeah. Or the business people that they realize at two p.m. Oh my god, I haven't eaten eat lunch, eaten lunch. I'll mm -hmm. just go get a slice. Boom. And yep. uh, we even have a term for when they walk in the door. It's like, oh, slice face. <laughs> the a nuclear weapon could go off. I'm gonna have a t-shirt slice face. It's like I like it. I can't wait to see the graphic that's gonna go <laughs> yeah. with that. By the way. <laughs> and they're hunched down looking at them. <laughs> yep, I do the same thing. I I love slices. We have zero slice uh, joints on this yeah. side of the river. Like we have a cut. We have a few slice shops in Louisville, but I won't say they actively put out slices no. all the no. time. Like a lot of times, I'll have to wait for a slice if I go to the slice joint. Yep. Um. So slices here, like I just don't think they've gotten it yet here in the Louisville <laughs> area. <laughs> I, I I'm a diehard slice person, and we when we lived in Boston, there was a we lived on uh, the Beacon Street above there, and I would just like, hey, uh, we call them the slice a holes. Can mm -hmm. I see? Okay. Anyway, you walk in, and they're just like, oh, like that. What do you want? And you're like, oh, okay, two slices, <laughs> please. <laughs> please. And they take it, and you just go, boom, bam. <laughs> That'll be five bucks. <laughs> and you're like, thank you, thank you, yeah. sir. <laughs> That's fun. Now, <laughs> bes so besides good. New York uh, slices, because we all know New York slices are amazing and they they reheat well, they uh, they perform really well under under the lamps or under the the heat cabinets. Um, what other types of pizza make a dynamite slice? Uh, you know the 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 big thick. Uh, I, I, here I go, Roman styles again, yeah. or the yeah. Sicilian the pizza the metros, where you can. And you know what? This is really good for us too. Is that? Uh, oh, you don't have to really be baking uh, a la minute. Like it, at the time it's ordered or anything, you can have mm -hmm. these long. You can get these long pans that are mm -hmm. are beautiful for pizza al metros or pizza by the meter. Yeah, uh, and you can you can par bake them and have them ready uh, wrap them up in saran wrap have them in the cooler you can have hundreds of them in there and, and I, yeah. I know this from the sicilian guys who to told me this that they actually freeze them so i yeah, tried i have a, heard that yeah sicilian, i've seen them do it with detroit it was on, like that it was yeah. on your podcast i saw mm -hmm. I, i'm not going to mention the guy because mm -hmm. i was like oh my god that's giving away a big secret but, <laughs> yeah hey that's crazy. what we do we give away secrets or we try yeah, to no, solicit to get secrets out of you we try <laughs> to <laughs> solicit you to uh to provide the secrets <laughs> yeah so the uh he said that they they'll fro froze them so i tried doing that and then i tasted a, a, a fresh one mm -hmm. with a frozen one uh, and my guys they didn't it, it we couldn't tell any difference oh, and i froze awesome. that for about two weeks too so for prep that's amazing because as it far is. as for your folks like that yeah. that works out better for your staff oh totally <laughs> you bring it out you put it in the, the the refrigerator and then uh you bring it out to room temperature and top it and how long do you have to br when do you have to bring it out in order to use it how long do you have to uh thaw before you can use uh usually, usually. they'll thaw a, a frozen pizza will thaw in about 15 to 20 minutes Mm -hmm. If you've got it in the, the, you take it from the freezer to the walk-in, and then that'll take less than uh, 10 minutes, you know, just to get okay. the temperature, then you can pop it in, and that's perfect. Yeah. It, yeah. it goes up the temperature. <clears throat> uh, so th those are really nice, because people will look at the inside of those, which are really, really beautiful. Yeah. And uh, there are certain things we can do. We've expanded our, our repertoire. At first, we were like, no, just pepperoni and cheese slices. And we realized that these veggie slices are selling like crazy. Yeah. And it's not my age, old pre-heart attack victims, you know, that mm -hmm. are are going, oh, you know, that slice looks really good. And it's got veggies on it. Yeah. That's 4-1 for the Gipper, you know. Yep. 
Not as much and, sodium uh, as those pepperoni slices. <laughs> yeah. So those uh the slices are I I, I really love them. Uh and they're nice to do. Uh, you know, toppings too. You could I smoked salmon now. Mm -hmm. Smoked salmon is just mm -hmm. delightful. And, and I'm with cream know, cheese. You go back with to cream cheese. On it. It. Yeah. <laughs> with the, you know, cream cheese. You put cream cheese and, and mozzarella on there. Yeah. And then after the oven, you you capers, onions, yes. so many things you can do. Some lemon. Yes. Give oh, me. yes. <laughs> yeah. You're you're speaking my language. I'm all about it. <laughs> That's cool. Oh. What's your favorite slice, Josh? I, I, I'm a cheese guy. I just love cheese slices. Yeah. 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 I do love cheese slices. That's really good. That's I'm a, good I'm a pepperoni too. girl. Give me those cup and char pepperonis on a slice oh, yeah. and, I, or even the old world pepperoni. I, I just love that. I can learn everything I need to know about a pizza shop. Just getting that cheese slice. You know, yeah. I know. <laughs> absolutely. Absolutely. Yeah. I'm a typical okay. Midwestern though. I love my sausage and mushroom. Oh, pizza. Yeah. I just it's just a great combination and I know other people are like oh my gosh why would you put mushrooms on your pizza and I'm like I love it <laughs> I love it <laughs> not me what about what about you John what's your, what's your favorite what's your yeah, favorite geez, slice geez, slice like geez. I'm like Josh but, and you know I'll also look at the pepperonis and mm -hmm. see if, if they're not cupping I, I just think these these guys are cheapskates they don't if you yeah. have classic pepperoni on your pizzas these days I'm telling you what you're a cheapskate because <laughs> Cupping is where it's at, you know? Yeah, yeah. for sure. Uh, but I had, uh, when I was young, I remember we used to go to the mall and I did, never had any money because uh, my brothers usually steal it from me. So <laughs> but we would go to the Orange Crush and they had slices in there. Uh -huh. And they are just magical. Uh, our slice shop that we uh, opened on the other side of town, yeah, uh, it's called the Slice House. I stole that from Tony Gimignani. Oh, for sure. <laughs> Why not? Copyright. <laughs> So the Slice House, we have, we use a, uh, they're all New York styles, but we decided to use a grande uh, um, mozzarella provolone mix. And so oh, yeah. you walk in there, I'll, I'll be bringing stuff in from across the town and and I, that just that smell, that provolone smell. Oh, yeah, it's such a great combination. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, that's amazing. All right, I'm gonna I'm gonna switch gears because there is something I want to talk about, and you're you're the perfect person to ask this question uh -oh. to. Okay, we are going into summer heat. <laughs> I mean, insane. Kitchens are gonna be over a hundred degrees. No matter if you have air conditioning in your in your shop, it's just the heat is just gonna be intense. It always is around the United States. Um, you know, what is some of your advice? To keep people from having blown dough <laughs> you know you know because i mean we're just it's that time of year where it's it's just hard to keep that dough uh at the correct temperature and the correct humidity you know we're in the midwest of course so we have yeah. humidity issues <laughs> um, so what are, what are some of your recommendations i i'm i'm a big uh when when we make our dough and they're balling it up i i'm like in in the walk-in right away but yeah. we're, we're also using um a uh, little less yeast and mm -hmm. cold, cold water, real cold water. I, okay. I'll take the, the buckets that we use for measurement. Yeah. And we will put them in, in the, the freezer for a little bit. There's a okay. little bucket. Wow. Freezer. Now, and, what do you normally keep your, uh, your water temperature at on uh, normal? Well, it's usually, you know, between, you know, 28, 32 mm -hmm. degrees coming out of the, the, the faucet mm -hmm. there. Okay. Um, so it's, it's not too cold, but, uh, after a while it gets really cold too. Cause we have some really cold aquifers here. Yeah. Nice. But, so that's, that's really nice, but yeah, getting them in, in the walk-in is really important. Uh, some, some people use ice, but that's just a pain in the butt. Yeah. Uh, it's just getting that out. And, uh, the less yeast is, is really important too. Mm -hmm. I mean, if you've got stuff blowing, it's blowing for certain reasons that there's a lot of yeast in there or it's yeah. too warm um, yeah. so to try to we and we have cups that we use that are perfectly measured out and so we'll go with just a little bit less yeast and uh it, i use the for baguettes i do the pan lanchan method with just really uh, high hydration and really cold uh water mm -hmm. and it it 
just it creates a delayed fermentation. Okay, okay. so the 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 uh, uh, the activation it allows more of the sugars to be released uh, from the starch. Oh, and okay. It creates this wonderful crust and taste in pizza dough too. Oh yeah, I I've seen your baguettes; they're amazing. So, yeah, <laughs> and, you know that that baguette dough is is wonderful to use. I, it's the same flour I use for pizzas. Yeah. So I try to just use the same things for simplicity's mm -hmm. sake and uh it, for cost sake <laughs> yeah exactly so it's it's um it's pretty cool to use these different different ways you know and i suggest everyone follow you on instagram on friday nights oh. going on oh, yeah. yeah just yeah. watching you just sitting there doing your folds it's like mesmerizing to just watch you up there you're just and you're folding oh. in all these amazing ingredients it's yeah. the curry. The dough. curry bread is is the bane of yes. my existence. Uh, oh. I I just I, I had a baker that helped me for a while, and he's he. I'm like, oh oh, I gotta go walk the dogs. Uh, and he's like, John, you keep doing this exactly right when we're doing the curry bread. <laughs> the curry stains everything, and it gets oh yeah, it, yellow it gets cuticles and oh man. But curry is so good, so I, I approve <laughs> with maple syrup. Oh my yeah. god, you know we oh, sell. Wow we'll have it out on the table like selling it and I, all i do is get a little cup of maple syrup and then someone's about to take a sample and i'm like here dip it in there first and then they taste it because so, so many people came by and said they made french toast out of it i'm like that ah, mm -hmm. ah, it's kind of freaky man no, uh, until i good. did and i'm like oh my god it's the maple syrup that's what yep. it is yeah. That's awesome. You know, for uh, those listeners that don't know, John does a big, huge business with the farmers markets on the weekends, right? I mean, yeah, just like huge with bre breads. I mean, you're doing just an assortment of different breads yeah. on uh, on any given uh, farmers market day. Yeah, it's a lot. It's a lot of baking. <laughs> it's about four or five hundred loaves. So yeah, and it's 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 tough too. Like you said, it's getting summer. So the spasticness inside there. So you've got everything proofing, and then you know, yeah. oh, I got ciabattas to got it. I got to load these things. I got to load those. I got to pull those out of the oven. I get, oh my gosh, I'm going crazy. <laughs> How do you keep them straight? Do you have what kind of system do you have in place, or is it just all up here and you're just trying? You saw to me at three thirty in the morning. I'm I'm in the back. <laughs> going, oh, why am I doing this? <laughs> Seriously, because like, you oh, love it. That's why you're doing oh, it. <laughs> it drives me nuts, but uh, it's it's fun and it's it's good money. It really is really good. People will will pay for really good uh, stuff, and and also I'm finding now, like I said, uh, the the toppings. I, I, I can go from the market that we have. Like today, there's a farmers market, so I will go there in a few minutes and get whatever stuff they have it's like a giant chef's basket a giant yeah. chopped and i try to figure out what's going to go on uh what goes with that and stuff like that oh, uh, yeah, that's cool. what would be beautiful to, to put on stuff nice to keep your creativity flowing yeah, yeah. It's, it, it's it is that that's really important you know nothing beats enthusiasm i tell my kids that mm -hmm. all the time and you know when you meet people in your own field i'm sure it's same thing and you're just like, wow, what a burnout. They need to just go away because it's just, <laughs> I, I don't like seeing people that are burned out and, yeah. That, yeah. you know, going through the motions. Yeah. I, you got to recharge seeing, somehow. Yes. Oh, yeah. <laughs> yeah. What so, do you, so doing breads is the way you recharge. What are some other ways that you do it within pizza, within the pizza realm? Oh, man. You know, it's just trying to keep things um, these days. With people so you know we used to put up political figures uh, on our our building i'd never do that yeah. now it's just yeah. uh, <laughs> try to keep things new uh you know we try to do a different uh month uh, like quarterly we do a pizza like a we're doing a yeah. super mushroom pizza now we can't take it off the menu because people like it so much yeah we're, we're working a lot with pickles man pickles and people love alive. pickles and i get yelled at all the time about pickles they're like it's, oh that's not a trend and i'm like i'm never gonna put pickles on my pizza and i'm it. like no it's i don't like pickles, pickles but i'll eat pickles on a pizza like pickles. Oh, yeah. 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 oh yeah it's just that different taste factor that you've got going and the kids the kids are the ones who like that so we yeah. had deaf cab for cutie come to a, a thing so we we created a pizza it's deaf pickle for cutie so and that's on pizzatoday.com. You gave it, it you has, gave us that yeah. recipe. So if you guys want it, go search it on pizzatoday.com and you'll find it. 
Yeah, Ooh. we're doing a new one now. It's a thin crust with potatoes on it and bechamel sauce and then the pickles. Ooh. So it's Ooh. just, woo, you got that creamy. Mm. That's hearty right like there. A sun, that's a Sunday pie right there. <laughs> that's right. <laughs> yeah. I, add some bacon to it and I'll be even <laughs> happier. <laughs> yep. Always add that to it. Yeah, well, well, we also cool. have, a, I have something <laughs> coming up and I've got to check with the code office, but I, I bought a rocket. It, it, it's, it looks like a rocket in, in Apalachicola. It was on our car the whole way back from Florida. And people okay. were just like looking, like <laughs> laughing at us. And it's it's a drop tank from an old World War II or Korean uh, uh, airplane where they used okay. to put gas in there and they'd get into a dogfight, they'd drop it, then they could, you know, zoom, but it would extend their uh, area they could fly to. Okay. And I'm going to put it up on our, uh, uh, on my roof sooner or later. <laughs> That's awesome. <laughs> I've got the paint off of it and stuff like that. Yeah. So. I think that'll be cool. a neat little attraction <laughs> so i grew up with restaurants like that like yeah you know, one had a, a balloon and a, a woman in a balloon yeah. waving stuff like yeah that. it's See that stuff you remember it's when like you're a kid that's the, road, the, roadside the, attraction yes. yeah yeah absolutely. absolutely well that's cool what do you have anything else before we get you off the off the episode do you have anything else going on or anything that you're looking forward to coming up uh, I, I just looking forward to, to, um, we have certain stages in, in our life <laughs> every year is we lose all of our employees around graduation time. Yeah. So that's when we get crushed with all this business, but I've lost all the employees because they, oh, they wow. move on and stuff yeah. like that. And Athens becomes this, this tiny little hamlet again. Yeah. So, college town. <laughs> yes. Where you've got less employees and you get, still get slammed with business, but yeah. Um, just trying to keep up with uh, everyone's tastes. People are getting so much more knowledgeable of foods these days, and yeah. it's yeah. ramping up with every special. We um, we have a TV show that we did eight years ago, oh, and it looks like it might be getting picked up. I shouldn't say that, but <laughs> keep that on the download. Don't tell anyone. Okay. You didn't hear that, guys. So, you did not hear that. I'm really, really yeah. excited about that. So. Well, that'll be awesome. Fantastic. That'll be awesome. Yeah. And I. Uh, so you do need to follow uh, John's Instagram too, because he forages. And that's some of my favorite things is watching you forage for different different things, whether it's uh, mushrooms or different kinds of greens and things yeah. like, cause I have friends that geek out on foraging and I'm like, you can eat that. And they're like, <laughs> yeah, yeah. That's it. <laughs> I, I, I saw the when the apocalypse happens, I'm going to Goody Camp. Oh, so no, I yeah. know. I know. I know. Like Everybody's going to Goody Camp. <laughs> I, I, I told people that I'm going to be on my, I'll be on my roof when the apocalypse, and I'm going to be selling little dime bags of flour to people with my Mossberg <laughs> shotgun. Here, here's one for you. <laughs> It'll be $80 and <laughs> gold. <laughs> <laughs> That's awesome. All right. Um, well, I hope you have a great summer and we'll see you. At, in Atlantic City at a yeah. Pizza and Pasta Northeast is the yeah. next time I think I'll see you. Well, Unless we can get me. to you. That would be awesome. I've still, yeah. I still have that dream to get over to you soon. Yeah. But uh, we'll see. All right. <laughs> Thanks like so time. much, you guys. All right. right. Thanks Great so much you. for coming on the show. We really appreciate it, man. And we'll, we'll see you around the way. Okay. Thanks. All right. All right. Bye-bye.